Hello there! Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. I forgot what episode we are. 276, I believe. Today is Wednesday, April 5th. 2023. Let's see. I don't know what the weather is like here in Atlanta. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from. And hello to my replay warriors. Welcome, welcome. Tonight, I've got two things to share with you. One is a parade of beautiful sympathy cards. We'll do that first. And the second one is this really fun pyramid box. I'm excited to show this to you. I was working on this today and figuring it out. So, hello everybody. I'll say hi to a few people. Joanne, Barbara, Charlene, Randy, Donna, welcome. I'm solo tonight. You probably didn't see Brian sitting next to me. He's at work tonight. So it's just me. Be kind to me. No, I'm joking. You guys are always amazing. But I'm excited to be here with you. So, 277. Thank you, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> um, awesome. So yeah, riding solo tonight. I quick made the kids dinner, got stuff ready, even though if you saw the behind the scenes, it looks like a tornado went through here, but that's just the story of my life these days. So uh, let's see, what do I have here? Oh, if you've got questions tonight, be sure to put a cue in front of your question. That will help me cue the questions for the end of the live stream. I'll save the Q&A for the end so I can focus on tonight's demonstration, and then I will stay on until I answer all of your questions. That's one of my favorite parts of joining you live every week. You guys have amazing questions. When you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more, and you'll, you do want to use my current host code on orders under $150. The easiest way to do that is to use my magic shopping link, thepaperpixie.com slash shop. That will auto-magically add whatever my current host code is for the month for you. Now, if your order is going to be 150 or more, which many of you are taking advantage of that because the last chance sale is so good, you want to make sure to remove the host code because you're going to actually earn stampin' rewards on orders of $150 or more that you can use towards or to apply to get some free product on that order. Now, if you don't use if you don't use your Stampin' Rewards on your order of $150, you lose them. So I don't want you to miss out on those. If you have any questions about using Stampin' Rewards, feel free to reach out and let me know. Speaking of which, the last chance sale dropped on Tuesday, April 4th. I think that was yesterday. Um, amazing, incredible products. I think there were... Uh, 200 and some products discounted. Discounts up to 60% off. Things are flying off the shelves as far as selling out. Uh, last chance are products that are retiring from both the mini catalog as well as the annual catalog. And those products are while supplies last through May 1st. So the easiest way to get to that and to automagically add my current host code is to use my shopping link or my link, the Paper Pixie dot com forward slash last chance that will take you directly to the online store and all of the last chance products. You can use the categories along the left hand side to look at different categories of products. There's also a new filter in the online store for um, event product availability. So you can look at things that are going on low inventory that might help you narrow down your list or things you want to grab sooner than later before they are gone for good. So um, let's see, I think that is it. Hello everybody, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we're going to jump into, I've got a mess here, but we're gonna do, I think what's next, yep. <laughs> I do have a quick show and tell from Nolan. Um, I had another show and tell from him, but he didn't bring it to me, so I will save it for next week. He was doing lots of mathematics today. I was so proud of him. He's definitely my child. Um, but he did a little card for me that I wanted to share with you. So by Nolan, I love you, mommy. <laughs> you are the best mommy in the whole, H-O-L-E, Y. W-H-Y world. How cute is that? He made that at school. Nolan is our first grader, and then we've got Lily, our fourth grader. I don't have any show and tell from her this week. But I thought it would, oops, as I make noise and messes and things tonight, I thought it would be really fun to show you a parade of sympathy cards. As many of you know, I lost my dad unexpectedly on March 4th, and I 
just a flow of sympathy cards and well wishes and condolences have come in from you over the last month. I can't even put into words how much it means to me, but I wanted to show you some of the beautiful handmade kindness that I've received in the mail. So I'm going to try to do this kind of rapid fire here. Um, I'm going to make sure that I can kind of move things along. So let me get myself situated. I'm going to give a shout out to each person by their first name. If you don't see your card and you've mailed it to me, there are a couple of cards I haven't picked up from my business mailbox. So never fear, I will include them in a future show and tell. I have a couple of non-sympathy cards as well. I'm going to put this card kind of off to the side here or this box so I can do these cards. So um, this first card is from Cheryl. It's just beautiful. Now I'm not going to remember all of the stamp sets. Most of these cards are using Stampin' Up! products. There's a few cards I included for customers that they um, had some really nice things to share. So I thought this was beautiful. I love the colors on this. Cheryl, thank you for that. Let's see. This one is from Linda. Isn't that that beautiful designer series paper? And it's got, it's kind of a fun fold here. Isn't that cool? Love that, just beautiful. This is from Linda. Love this die cut. Now this one is on the last chance sale. That's that beautiful flora paper as well. This is from Lisa Curcio. Beautiful. And Mary Fish. I'm lucky to have them in my circle of friends. And all of you as well. This was a beautiful card from my customer Elaine. But I wanted to show you, I think that she took this photograph. Isn't that photo gorgeous? Love that. Had to share that with you. This is from Deborah. Look at that beautiful die cut with the, the uh, feather there. Love that. This is from Jamie. Isn't that beautiful? Nested Friends, I think. This one is actually carrying over. You will not see it in the catalog, but it is carrying over to the online exclusives category. From Lori. Love that Horizons paper. Just makes the most classic cards. That paper is retired, but just beautiful. This is from my team member, Pam. Beautiful. Love the coloring on that. Rosario. Beautiful, clean and simple card. Love that. Love that's the deckled rectangles, which I need to use more often. <laughs> I love those dies. This is from my team member, Karen. Great fancy fold here. It's got a little Velcro closure and a gatefold card. Another gorgeous card here. And I can't remember, this is Anna Griffin, I think. Beautiful cards. This is from Terry. This is from Lynn. I mean, how easy are these cards with this gorgeous designer series paper from, it's not Flora and Fauna, you guys know which one. <laughs> you guys know it better than I do, but just stamping a sentiment on there, just a great card. We're doing a parade of sympathy cards and then we're gonna jump into tonight's project. This is from Christine, isn't that beautiful? Love that copper foil. From my team member, Jan, using the beautiful paper we're actually gonna be using tonight, which is an online exclusive. I love heat embossing, isn't that beautiful? This card is from Cindy. Love that classic with the deckled rectangles. And she also sent me this beautiful watercolored image. Wouldn't that be great for our card front? Love that. Let's see, this card is from Mary. Gorgeous. Isn't 
This is a stunner because it is hand watercolored from my customer Kachik. Look at her handwriting with sympathy and I had to show you the inside. Look how pretty that flower is in there. Just stunning on watercolor paper. This is from Marie. Again, that beautiful Horizons paper. Love the birds on here. Oh, thank you, Jackie. This is from Jackie Beers. Beautiful. This is from Marilyn. I love the smaller size card, the three and a half by five. That gold foil on there. Cynthia. And I loved this because on the back she said, rest in peace, Papa Pixie, which is what you all lovingly referred to my dad. A.K.A. John, A.K.A. Papa, his grandkids called him. So that was a really nice touch. This is from Jill. Beautiful, classic sympathy card. I love the white on white with just a touch of the soft sea foam there. And these, I believe, are the Genial Gems. Those are on the clearance or the last chance list. This is from Denise. Look at that beautiful stamping there. Love that. Christina. This was celebration paper, I think from two celebrations ago. Gorgeous, gorgeous paper. And the coordinating stamp set. Laura with beautiful, there's some um, blending brushes happening here and white embossing. Really pretty, really makes those flowers pop. This is from Vicki. I didn't want to disturb her beautiful bow there of twine, but that's one of those fancy fold cards that opens out with that diagonal opening. Gorgeous. This is a fun one from Cindy, a really cool fancy fold. Wait till I open it. Oh, let me open it the right way here. How awesome is that? Do you see how it pops out? Oh my gosh, that is so cool. I gotta figure out how to do that. <laughs> Let's see. I wanna give everybody credit here. Sandy, beautiful classic with those layers. Lovely as a tree. Hey Jane, do me a favor and pop a Q. Ask your question again and put a Q in front of it so I don't miss that. I'd love to answer that for you. Helen, another beautiful, see that uh, embossed paper in the back. That was a celebration paper from a little while ago. Marianne with Forever Fern, which is now gone. It's all sold out, but I loved that stamp. Classic with uh, Mossy Meadow. Oh, Sue Campfield, awesome. She's one of my dear friends. This one is from Wanda. Beautiful, I love that prayers die cut. I got just a few more to go. Beautiful. I think this is embossing. Isn't that tree just stunning? on white with that gold touch of gold foil and the stars, I love those. That was from Carol, if I forgot to mention that. This is from Nancy, my aunt's dear friend who is also in love with Stampin' Up! like I am. I love that we have that in common. Beautiful card. And we didn't know that about each other for many years, which I thought was so fun. Let's see, is this one that I missed? This is from Kathleen, a gorgeous um, fancy fold there, but I love what she put in here. This is one of my favorite grief passages, which I remember from when my mom passed away 25 years ago. If I can just read it to you, grief never ends, but it changes. It is a passage, not a place to stay. Grief is not a sign of weakness, nor a lack of faith. It is the price of love. 
And isn't that the truth, that grief is, grief is the price of love? So I love that, Kathleen. Thank you for that. Let's see. The next card is from Linda. I absolutely love the scoring that she did for that frame. This is from Joanne. Beautiful with that strip of designer series paper. This is from Barbara, and I love this sentiment. We're gonna be using this stamp set today. Nothing fancy, just love. Isn't that pretty? That's the same paper from this card. They happen to be right next to each other. Great minds, you guys. And this is from Brenda, and she included some very thoughtful inserts here, a really nice handwritten note, but she also gave me a list of books that she recommended, which I thought was so sweet. I'll just hold that up for a little bit. Um, I'm definitely gonna be checking a few of these out. Um, the Orphaned Adult, The Adult or Orphan Club. So thank you, that was so, so thoughtful, and I will definitely be checking out all of these books. So Brenda, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. All right. I said a few more, but <laughs> it's just so amazing. How beautiful is that? That's the ginkgo set of dies. And I love, love, love the way that this turned out. How pretty would this be for an Easter card as well? This is from Carol Lee. This is from Kathy. Again, a beautiful embossed clean and simple and I love this sentiment with deepest sympathy I'm not sure that's a stampin up sentiment but I love it love it love it this is from Jean Isn't that pretty so that is the glossy paper that I believe she inked up um, a clear block to do that beautiful background I'm making a mess over here. This is from Nancy. Gorgeous. A few of the leaves are stamped and the flowers. Classic. This is from Vicki with a really nice note. You all put very sweet and thoughtful notes. Thank you. Beautiful with that dragonfly. Let's see. This is from Katrina, and she included a sweet note and a Starbucks gift card. So Katrina, thank you. I will definitely be using that. But beautiful, you can see the embossing there, that frame, gorgeous. This stunner is from Stesha Bloodheart. Isn't that beautiful? Very, very cute. And then I love her little sticker on the back, Stampin' Hoot, gorgeous. Then we've got Mary Ellen, beautiful with the glitter and the heat embossing. Love the three ribbon, the ribbon wrapped around three times. That's beautiful. Two more. This one is from Wanda. How fun is that with the pieces on the front? And then my up, up line and dear friend Pam. Classic. Love those colors together. All right, I have a couple more cards that are not sympathy. That I wanted to share with you. This one is from Linda. That was a birthday card for me since I did celebrate a birthday in March, right around the time my dad passed. This is from Wanda. Yes, beautiful birthday card. Got a super fun St. Patrick's Day card from Linda. Thank you, thank you. This is a birthday card from my dear friend Jackie. Love this. And it's got a cute little pocket in the front. This is just the card. I think that's an inch and a quarter or inch and a half. And then that piece is just folded up to create this really cute pocket for a tag. You could put a gift card in there, a tea bag. Really, really cool, fun fold. Got a beautiful Easter card. I think that this is from Carol Lee. Gorgeous with the daffodils. 
And then this one is from Kimberly using that beautiful uh, masks. I cannot think of the name of them. They're in the mini catalog. They are gonna be retiring, but it's just really beautiful the way that turns out with our blending brushes. So that is the parade of cards for tonight. We're gonna go ahead and jump into tonight's project, which I wonder where I put my project <laughs> so I can show it to you again. Here it is. All right, so we're gonna be making just tonight's project. I'm trying to take it easy on myself. Um, actually, I wanna come back and talk about a couple of things before I jump into tonight's project. So give me one second so I, I'm not, you're not seeing me in the little uh, picture in picture here. Hold on, where are we? <laughs> oh, let's come back to this. Okay, so a couple of things that I wanted to share with you. I've gotten lots of questions about product shares, stamp and blends, labels, a whole bunch of things. So a quick update on um, sort of my next steps and things. So yes, I will be doing product shares for the new annual catalog. So stay tuned for that. Those of you that have participated in my product shares in the past, you're already on my email list. You'll be the first to be notified. If you want to get added to my email list to be notified, you can go to thepaperpixie.com slash shares and add your name to my email list. And then I will make sure you'll, you'll get that first email email when I launch those out. I will be up updating my Stampin' Blends labels as well. That is an $8 digital download. It is a one-time purchase. So those of you that have already purchased the digital download for the Stampin' Blends, that one-time purchase gets you free updates for the life of blends. So um, anytime that I need to update for a new, new colors that come out, you will get an email with the digital download that is assuming that your email address was correct when you placed your order. You can always reach out to me if you have troubles getting that download. But just to let you know, those are coming. It's gonna take me just a little bit to get those done because as you can probably as assume, that download needs to get overhauled as far as moving colors down to the retired section and adding all the new colors. I think, I forget how many new colors of blends we're getting. So it is coming. I am planning to update that, but I've been getting lots of questions about that as well. So yes, there'll be product shares. Yes, I will be updating the blends. And I also will be putting information out about In Color Club and possibly other color clubs. I have not had a chance to sit down and figure that out yet. Just as a heads up, this month is a little bit crazy for me between the new catalog. My dad's memorial service is actually on April 29th. So kind of all the things this month. So I appreciate all your patience and grace. It means the world to me. So just want to make sure that I did that really quickly before I forgot. Now we're going to jump into tonight's project and it is a pyramid box. Now, this is basically a pixified version of an origami style pyramid box. So I wanted to show you, uh, let's see if I can find the paper. Um, I saw a pin on uh, Pinterest where you can create this pyramid style box using kind of origami. And as you know, with origami, you get all of these kind of folds and things in the paper. Essentially what this box does is it kind of folds in like so and creates this really cool pyramid, which I love, but I didn't love all the creases and score lines that kind of appeared everywhere. So I set out today to figure out a pixie-fied version. Um, I've seen a couple of pyramid boxes as well. This is different than what I've seen, and I love the way it turned out. And I'm giggling a little bit because I was actually um, video chatting with my brother Greg, and I was just playing around with the box while I was talking to him. I'm like, ooh, I like the way that looks. So I, I'm gonna close it a little bit differently, but I'm gonna show you um, the two different ways you can close this. So. This turned into this, but as you see, we don't have any of the score lines here and it looks way harder than it is. I promise you, I will make it easy for you, okay? So we're gonna be using, and I should have looked up the name of that paper. It's in the online exclusives, which you can actually find at thepaperpixie.com slash online only. It is a specialty paper that's only available online, not in any of our published catalogs. And this is a fantastic six by six uh, project, which as you know, I love and many of you love as well, especially if you participate in my paper shares. So this is just a six by six piece of designer series paper. You can use any designer series paper you like in your stash. You can even use cardstock as well. What I'm gonna show you is how to create this from a six by six. I don't have measurements for any other size. Um, we're just gonna do the six by six. So. 
Uh, designer series paper will be just will be certainly sturdy enough. This paper is, I think, maybe just a little bit heavier weight. Not a lot heavier weight, but it's got that beautiful foil. And it does come when, with three different colors. Let me show you what the other ones look like. So you've got kind of the very vanilla and gold. You get two pieces of each of these. The white and the silver. And then I can never remember if it's copper or rose gold. But nonetheless... It's stunning. So this would be really pretty as well. So we're going to stick with silver tonight because that's what I designed. All right, so I'm going to grab my Simply Scored. You can also do this with a paper trimmer. I'll give you some tips and tricks for that. What we're going to do, I added a um, Sharpie line here. I did not need to, but I just did that today thinking I might need it for this project. But anyways, in case you're wondering, I added a three inch Sharpie line here. Um, I'm going to use the six inch Sharpie line and I'm going to turn my paper. Now, again, this paper is directional and we're turning it into sort of diagonal, which I'm totally fine with. I still think that it looks beautiful on the side, even though these patterns are kind of going every which way but up, up to you to decide what pattern you want to use. And I'm gonna turn this six by six on the diagonal where the points are lining up on that six inch mark, both top and bottom. Now I've added a Sharpie line here that helps me see that much better, especially from um, lining it up here and then also lining it up at the bottom. It's hard to tell where the six inch, in, where the six inch mark is without that Sharpie line. So I promise it will not change the functionality of your Simply Scored. It'll only enhance it. So with it turned on the diagonal here, we're going to go ahead and score at the four and three quarter inch mark. So four and three quarters. And seven and one quarter. Essentially what we're doing is we're going one and a quarter inches to the left of the six inch line and one and a quarter inches to the right. So that is at four, four, 445. <laughs> four and three quarters and seven and one quarter. And what we've done is those two score lines. I'm gonna turn it a quarter of a turn and repeat the same thing. So again, let me slide it up a little bit, make sure we're in camera. Point to point on that six inch line, four and three quarters. and seven and one quarter. So you're gonna end up with this grid looking pattern. You might be able to see it better on the back side there. Okay, and that's all we need the Simply Scored for. Now let me show you on the paper trimmer what we would do here. So you're going to line up the, let me see, let me make sure I can get this right point to point here at the one and a quarter inch mark. Okay, so can you see that? These, this line right here, each of these lines are quarter inch increments. I'm going to the one and a quarter inch mark, so that's one line to the left of one inch. And then there's, you can't see it on the bottom, but there is, oh, there we go, very, very bottom of the screen. There is measurements along the bottom. So you can line up the points at inch and a quarter here, and then you could score. And you just wanna kind of rotate the points all the way around. It's gonna be the same thing lining up at one and a quarter. So it takes a little bit more effort with the paper trimmer, but it is doable. Now bringing in the template here, I just wanna show you. We are gonna now do some diagonal scoring. Now you can use the stylus from your Simply Scored or if you got the Take Your Pick tool, you can add the stylus tip to the end of that. And then I highly recommend a metal ruler, which I do have listed on my favorites page here, thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. It's a twofer, you'll get a six inch ruler and a 12 inch ruler and the one that I recommend and I love, love, love it. So. We are now going to, if I turn this on the diagonal, um, at the intersection of these score lines, we're gonna score diagonally up to the corner of the paper. And we're gonna create these triangles here, okay? So that's all we're gonna do is these eight diagonal score lines, okay? I'm gonna do that next. I'll bring the template back in a moment once we finish. 
So I'm gonna, I, what I like to do is put my stylus right there in that intersection. I put that down first. Then I bring the ruler to the ball tip of the stylus that makes sure that there's room for the ball tip. And then I'm coming up to the corner here. Let me zoom in just a wee bit. Do you see how I'm just a little, well, my hand is getting in the way. I'm just a little bit away from the corner there so that when I score, the ball tip goes right into the corner. See that? Right to the corner. So then, same thing. I'm gonna put my ball tip right there in the intersection of those score lines and score. So then what we've done is that triangular score lines there, like so. I'm gonna zoom this back out here. There we go, okay? And then I'm just gonna repeat that in each of the remaining three sections. It does help to have a cushiony surface underneath you. Um, I've got, this is like a neoprene desk pad or I also recommend the stamp and pierce mat. That would work as well. And there's really no way around these diagonal score lines unless you were to do it the origami style where you'll create them naturally by the folds, okay? But I do like a crisp and clean gift box without the extra score lines. That's just how I roll. <laughs> and I'm not pressing too hard. I don't want the paper fibers to break on me but I'm creasing it just enough that I can see those score lines. It's a little hard to see on the um, foil side, but there you go on the back side. This is a single-sided paper, so it's a little bit easier to see the score lines. And I just wanna show you again, I'm gonna pull the template in here, okay? Now the next thing I'm gonna do is fold and burnish on the score lines that we created with the Simply Scored or the Stampin' Trimmer, whichever one you did. So not the short diagonal ones, but the ones that go all the way across the paper that we did that one and a quarter inches away from center. Like so, okay, so we've done that folded and burnished. Now we're gonna do a little bit of cutting. Um, where are my paper snips? Here they are. We're gonna remove these triangles that are right here in basically the middle of the edge. Now, for me, I can see the score lines much better on the inside or the back side of the card of the paper. I have cards on the brain today. So I'm just coming in and removing where we just folded and burnished using those lines and removing that triangle there. And we'll do that in all four of those sections. Like so. And also removing these triangles here is gonna reduce some of the paper bulk inside the pyramid box. So you've got some room for the treat or gift that you're gonna put on the inside. Now the base of this box is two and a half inches square. It's a pretty good size in the bottom. There's a number of different ways you can create pyramid boxes. The ones I've seen before was divvying up the paper in thirds. This one I felt, um, because it's on the diagonal, you're only cutting away these tiny sections, so it gives you a little bit more space inside uh, the pyramid box. It just maximizes the paper for you. So the next thing we're gonna do is then fold and burnish on the diagonal score lines. And we're gonna fold those into the box, like so. So we're taking this valley score line and turning it into a mountain fold. <laughs> Thank you, Virginia. Maybe I should have been a surgeon. <laughs> uh. 
All right, so the other thing you can do if you want to is just kind of fold those in again and burnish. As I've said before, you want to tell the paper who's boss. <laughs> My dad thought that was funny when I said it a couple weeks ago, or I should say more like six weeks ago, but I don't know where the last month has been, right? That's how life works. All right, so it's kind of looking like that. Looks like, like a throwing star, doesn't it? So then you're just going to decide um, whichever... I guess whichever pattern you want to be in the front, you're gonna go ahead then and punch holes, I'm thinking, on the right and the left. Let me make sure about that, yes, okay. So I'm just gonna come in with a eighth of an inch circle punch. Again, this is retired from Stampin' Up, but it's a standard circle punch size. And I'm gonna come in, I don't know, about a quarter of an inch and punch a hole right there and just do it on opposite sides. Now, there is two different ways that you can close this pyramid box. I'm gonna show you the way that I fell in love with and sort of stumbled upon while I was chatting with my brother, with my brother Greg. Um, or you can do another way where you punch a hole in all four corners here, just like on the right and the left side. And then you could just weave your uh, ribbon or twine through all four holes to close it. So um, that way would be you'd have the four holes punched and you'd fold all of these um, trapezoidal <laughs> um, shapes inside like so. See how I'm just kind of folding those all in and that creates that beautiful pyramid box. Now I'm pinching it at the top so it's staying together but you'd have a hole punched at the top of all of these triangles and then you would just kind of, in sort of an S formation, feed the ribbon or twine through the holes to close it off. But while I was talking to Gregors, I decided on the right and left sides that I was going to actually put these sort of, well, I guess they're triangles, not trapezoids. Or, or, tri or triangles, trapezoids. Is this a geometry? <laughs> I'm joking. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and fold in the front and back those triangles are inside the box and these triangles I'm going to put outside the box and it just gives it a really cool look. That way I only have to run my twine or ribbon through the right and left sides and tie a bow. I don't know, it just kind of gives it some more structure. Again, I can kind of fold and burnish these if they're sticking out a little bit too much. So that's how we're going to do this one. Okay. So the front and the back that don't have the holes, we're going to fold in. And the right and the left that do have the holes, we're going to have those flaps on the outside. And just gives it a really cool structure. Okay? I love that. So I'm going to grab some ribbon. This is also an online exclusive. It is a combo pack of ribbon, the gold and silver, 1 8 inch trim combo pack. Okay? And it's this beautiful ribbon. I haven't even opened the gold yet, but we're gonna go ahead and use silver tonight. And you would just put your treat in here or like a handful of jelly beans would be cute if you're still making some treats for Easter for this weekend. Um, a Ferrero Rocher would fit in there. Maybe a cute little mini soap cube. I don't know, I'm throwing things out there. A little mini bath bomb would probably fit in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and feed this ribbon through. Now I do have it cut at an angle to help me feed it through the holes. We'll go through the right side. And then the left side. And I do have my ribbon sort of flat. Let me show you up that up close. See how it's kind of this way? Just to make sure it doesn't get in the way with those two pieces. Now again, I'm gonna close up the front and the back, and then the right and the left. Pull that ribbon through. Just take your time here to get the ribbon where you want it. So it's like so. And then we're gonna go ahead and tie a bow. All right, hold on. Am I doing this right? Yes. <laughs> I feel like I'm out of practice with my bows here. I am doing this the wrong way, aren't I? <laughs> All right, let's, yep, I'm doing this backwards. Hold on. It's so funny, you guys. I'm completely out of practice here. I don't know if this is going to work, but 
My brain is telling me this isn't going to work, but we're gonna see the power of live video here. Anything can happen, right? Yeah, I did it the wrong way. I should have trusted my gut. Listen to what I said the first time. I know it all depends on how you tie bows. For me, I always have the spool on the right and then I switch it to the left. I should have stuck with my gut there. <laughs> yeah, this ribbon, I'm so I just started playing with it today. It's gorgeous. Just make sure our pieces and parts are in the right spot there. Whoops, I got the thing tucked in. Did you guys catch that? This flap is not on the outside. Here we go. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right, we're just going with it. I'm going the opposite way that I normally do. But it's gonna work, I can feel it. All right, there we go. I just did it opposite, probably the way um, if you're left-handed you would do it. <laughs> but with this ribbon, it's so, so pretty. And surprisingly, despite what it looks like tonight, it's very easy to work with because it's that eighth of an inch. But I absolutely love the way that that ribbon sparkles. The camera even has, even has a hard time picking it up. But we'll go ahead and cut the tails off here. Again, beautiful. It's kind of got a double-sided double look to it. So the front is completely silver and the back you can see just a little bit of white. It's really pretty, eighth of an inch. And I think you get a total of 10 yards. So five yards of each, five of the gold and five of the silver. And that again is in online exclusive. So the paperpixie.com slash online only to check that out, okay? So now we're gonna do a little bit of stamping and I wanted to add a little bit of color to this because um, the silver and the white is stunning as it is, but I wanted to add blues was kind of where I was leaning towards. So we're gonna be using Pool Party and Coastal Cabana, okay? And then two bundles that the bundle pricing is going away as of May 1st, but um, all of these products will be carrying over to the annual catalog. So um, two-tone flora dyes and the coordinating stamp set. This is so fun and easy to work with. I'm gonna show you a tip there. <clears throat> and then the something fancy bundle. And these dyes in here are fantastic as well. Great sentiments, we're going with a happy birthday. You could easily do congratulations. I thought this, I don't know, this kind of reminds me of like a birthday hat. So I went with a birthday theme there. All right. Now to find the stamps, which I know I put off to the side when I, oh, good grief. Here we go. I know they're here somewhere. They're right behind me. All right. We can get it to fit on this piece, we shall see. So we're gonna first stamp, we've got the flowers here. Let me show you the stamp set again and show you the thing to look for. So in the, let's see, it's four different flowers here. You've got the more detailed image and the um, sort of the base image and they all have something in the stamp set that will make it really easy for you to line up the photopolymer. So for example, on the stamps we're using tonight, we have kind of this little uh, look to me it looks like an eyebrow shape that little eyebrow shape you just line that up on both stamps and it makes it really easy to line up same thing with sort of the um is that the stamen in the um flower there line those up again this one has almost looks like a mustache you line up that shape and then here are the six dots so really easy to line these up actually there's more than one two three four there's five the small ones as well so Love when they make it easy for us. So I'm gonna start with the lighter of the blues, Pool Party. For me, it's easier to do the base image first. 
So pool party, I'm just going to do this full force here. And then Coastal Cabana. And this is fun to kind of pick up colors that are complementary. If you wanted to just use one color, I would recommend stamping off on the base stamp and then doing um, sort of second generation stamping for the base and then full stamping or first generation stamping for the top. But in a second, look at how three dimensional that looks. Love, love, love it. Then we're gonna do Happy Birthday in Coastal Cabana. Like so. All right. I'm gonna bring in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. Actually, hold on, let's do. I'm gonna get some of my post-it tape here. Let's go ahead and line up our dies first. Now again, this is fairly easy to line up. I'm gonna zoom in a bit so you can see that. I'm just lining up. You can see the white. I just kind of move the die around a little bit until I get those edges lined up where I want them. And then I'll just take some of the post-it tape that I reuse often. And then we'll throw this piece on the sentiment. I do like to do two pieces of post-it tape each time. Um, that sort of anchors the die in place so it doesn't move around on you, like so. And then we can run that through the machine. Let's come back out here. Pass through there. Quick and easy sentiment without having to cut it with our scissors. And then a beautiful flower. Let's clean up my mess here. All right, so now with the way that we close this box, remember that these are kind of flaps here. I wanna make sure that I don't stick my flower there so that the recipient can't open it. So my tip for that is to just take a pair of dimensionals and I'm gonna pop those down here in this section so that they're not in the way, okay? Just a pair. Then I can pop the flower here. You just want to make sure that the bottom of the flower does not go past the bottom of the pyramid box. So like that, okay? So now that box can still be opened and closed. And then I'll put a pair of dimensionals on the back side of this sentiment piece. Gregor's is in the house. And then we will layer that over our flower, like so. You could add a rhinestone if you like, but I think that the paper and the ribbon adds just the right amount of bling. And then that little pop of blue. So again, the base of this was two and a half by two and a half. We don't have any score lines that are peeking out. And you've got a couple of different ways that you can close this. This one I opted to leave those flaps on the outside. It gives it a little bit of structure doing that, but you can absolutely close those all in. This is the tea boutique. This was the sample I was playing with today. You can fold all of those flaps inside and have it close like so. Now I have two holes there, ignore that. There should just be one. I punched down a little bit low, but let me show you how I would use the ribbon on this one, or feed the ribbon, I should say. We'll just do it off the spool so that you can see. So I would come in through the right, through the left, then I'd come in through the back, to the front and I'll show you what that looks like up close. It's kind of a bit of like a zigzag. So right, left, 
kind of around the outside to the back through the front. And then when you pull that closed, it's got pulling one of those sides too tight there. You can then tie a bow and that is actually not looking right, is it? Let's do this one more time. I wanna make sure that you guys have options here. I'm gonna try going to the back one first. And I'll show you this up close, assuming this one works. There we go. Okay, so we kind of did that in a circle. So through the right, then the back, then the left, then the front. So then when you pull those closed, you've got it coming out these two holes and then you can tie the bow here. So just a different way to close that if you tuck all the flaps in and if you leave the two flaps out, you can just punch the two holes and then feed it through the center and tie the bow on the front. So options, options, okay? All right, so this is tonight's project for you. I will be um, editing the video and adding chapters so you can jump from the sympathy card parade directly to the project, directly to the Q&A that will help our replay watchers as well. But whenever you come back to the video, you can just jump from chapter to chapter. I hope you guys know that. It's a great way to navigate my live streams to the different sections. So I'm gonna go ahead and tee up question and answer time. I can't wait to see your questions. So give me just a moment here. Oh, I love it. Oh, uh, Jill saying, I missed Ask Me Anything last week and watched the replay. I would like to know how you and Brian met. Well, we met at work. We met at Ernst & Young uh, back in 2002. So it, we've been together now. Well, technically we've been together for 20 years from when we first started dating. But I did meet him at work. He and I were both working on the same project. The funny part about that project was that the team that I was a part of, we got to go to Berlin, Germany for six months. And poor Brian and his team had to go to West Mifflin, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so um, when we wrapped up our work in both Berlin and um, West Mifflin, Pennsylvania, we both came back to the office to uh, wrap up documentation and things. It was a big purchase price dispute that we were working on. And the office, I was out of the Cleveland, Ohio office. Brian was actually based out of the New York City office, then the Atlanta office. Anyways, I think at the time he lived in New York City. Um, did he live? No, he lived in Atlanta at the time. Um, it wasn't long after he'd been in New York City. But anyways, he came back to the Cleveland office as well. And the rest is history. So um, that's how we met. We met at work. And I always joked, um, you know, I always joke with my kids, they are their parents are both accountants, so they are doomed with numbers. <laughs> so great question. Thanks, Jill. Brian spells his name with a Y. B-R-Y-A-N. <laughs> Let's see. I purchased my first couple of sets of Stampin' Blend markers. Do I properly store them standing up or lying down? Great question, Tracy. You want to store them lying down. So you want them to be in a horizontal position. That will make sure that the ink stays available for both tips of the Stampin' Blend. So they're not like Copics that you can store vertically. You do need to store Stampin' Blends horizontally. So I think you can see right there are my Stampin' Blends. They're all horizontally stored in a Stampin' Storage Stampin' Blends um, organizer. Okay, great question. Let's see. Um, no, they cannot, Christina, because they're alcohol based. So the, well, sorry, let me clear, let me, you're asking me on both markers. Rewind. Stampin' Blends, no, because they're alcohol based. Stampin' Write markers, yes. They are water based. They are the same ink that we use in our ink pads. So those would be the markers that you can use to color direct to stamp. So Stampin' Write. Um, are water based. You can color directly on stamps with those. And it's a really cool effect. Uh, to do sort of multicolored sentiments as an example, or even coloring directly on a flower image that has both leaves and petals. You can do the petals in one color, the leaves in another. Um, you then want to kind of huff on the stamp set, like, because <gasps> um, it'll take you a little while to color it. That will just re-moisten the ink, and then you'll have a great stamping experience. So yeah, stamp and write, you can color on 
stamp sets? Great question. Did I order and receive my demonstrator pre-order items for the new annual catalog? If so, will be will you be sharing your haul with us in an upcoming live stream? Yes, I woke up at 1.55 a.m. <laughs> yesterday morning and I got my pre-order in. I also ordered catalogs. That's the other thing I forgot to tell you guys. If you are a customer of mine and you've placed an order of $25 or more since October 1st, you were sent an email to request your catalog. You do have to request your catalog. Um, but anyways, I ordered catalogs and I ordered my pre-order. My pre-order will be here tomorrow. It's scheduled to arrive. And yes, I will be doing a sneak peek video for you. I haven't decided when. It might be Friday night, but don't hold me to that. It just kind of depends how the rest of this week goes. So the kids are home for spring break this week. We're going to go see the new Super Mario Brothers movie and I'm um, going to try to do a couple fun things with them before the week's out. But yes, I will be doing a haul video. Thanks, Mary. What medium do you use when you watercolor? So um, when I watercolor, which isn't very often, but um, I just don't feel like I'm good at it. But with watercoloring, I would use the... Uh, stamp and write markers or even our ink refills. One of the ways I love to pick up ink for watercoloring is to either color directly to a clear block and spritz with water or use the watercolor brushes and pick up ink that way or even dropping a couple drops directly from an ink refill right on a clear block, kind of using the clear block as a palette and the watercolor brushes. Um, and then as far as paper, we've got the Fluid, I think it's called the Fluid 100 watercolor paper. Um, I did use to watercolor using Shimmery White as well, but that has now, um, that's being retired and is totally sold out as well. That's the one that had a little bit of shimmer to it. But yeah, our Fluid 100 watercolor paper is great for that. You can't really watercolor um, on our regular basic white because the, the paper will start to pill. So you really do need to use a type of watercolor paper. Oh, yay. Thank you, Cindy. I love Susan. She's one of my buddies. So thank you. Thank you. Your card was beautiful. Do you know if you're still going to have the standard stamp cases in the new catalog? I think so. I'm trying. I remember seeing them. So yes, I believe so, but I may need to clarify that, Kathy. So um, if you think of it, shoot me an email, um, support at thepaperpixie.com, and I can double, ch double check that for you. Uh, will I include gems? I will not be doing embellishments, Carla. I learned my lesson. <laughs> During the last product shares, I just don't have the um, bandwidth or time to do, um, it's not the best use of my time to do embellishments. So that was a one and done. Um, there will be a free gift included. I haven't decided quite yet what the free gift is. I think it'll likely be um, the twine combo pack because I don't like divvying up twine. <laughs> another thing that's not the best use of my time. Um, so I will not be doing embellishments. It will be uh, paper and ribbon only, okay? For the larger die sets, i.e. six by six, how do you store them in a sleeve and container? Uh, Margaret, good question. I'm trying to think most of the dies that we have all will fit on one or two of the five by seven magnet cards, which is what I use for my storage. Um, I think one of the uh, examples here is the two-tone flora dies. Those were, um, you know, too big to fit on one 5 by 7 so I just put two magnet cards in there, um, sandwiched back to back like so. Um, but I was trying to think, the only other die set that we had of uh, current dies that was bigger than 5 by 7 was the slim line. The slim card dies, those are retiring, or at least they've, or maybe they've already retired. I, can't I think they've already retired. Um, so I don't have a need to store them. Um, but that's a good question. I know many of you have lots of dies. Um, so if anybody's got some tips for Margaret, I am one of those that when it comes to organization, everything needs to be uniform. <laughs> so I do store all of them on five by seven. So. Um, that probably didn't answer your question very well, Margaret. Is your table a mat in your favorites list? It is, Elizabeth. However, um, it's at the very bottom of the list in my video equipment because I do just use it for videos. 
it's really hard to find. So um, I keep looking for an alternative. I do have it listed there, but the last I checked, it is not available on Amazon. That's where I purchased mine from. Um, so if I find an alternative, I will definitely update the list. But yeah, it is linked in my video equipment section on my favorites page. Again, thepaperpixie.com slash favorites. And um, you can just kind of keep your eye on it in case it ever comes back in stock. Is this ribbon the same size and texture as the in colors for 2022 to 2024? Ooh, good question. Let me see if I can find mine. I'm gonna compare. Um, it is different, Linda. Let me show you. I've got Parakeet Party. They're both eighth of an inch in um, width. And actually, let me come back to demo. So this one is more of a kind of woven. Do you see how if I push it together, it's kind of woven like that? So different than this, but they are both an eighth of an inch. They are different, however. So this one has a little bit more sturdiness to it, for lack of a better term. This one's a lot softer and easier to work with. If I were to compare the two, the in color ones are easier to play with just because of the way that they're woven. Okay. Let me come back to this here. All right. Good question. Could you have just turned the project instead of pulling the ribbon out? Probably, Sharon. <laughs> it's funny when you're live or even when I'm you know, looking at something, you guys have probably experienced this before. Sometimes you can't see, what is it, the forest for the trees? It might be right in front of you. And But yeah, I may have just been able to turn the project instead of pulling the ribbon out. Good point. What do I do with the bits of ribbon left over from trimming a bow? Full disclosure, it goes right in the trash. <laughs> um, it's typically not long enough for me to use for a project. Um, if it is long enough to you know, fold in half and maybe be an, uh, an accessory on the front of a card, like behind a sentiment, I'll hang on to it. But for the most part, um, I don't have enough left to use, so I just put it in the trash. I know that's hard to hear, isn't it? Do you know if Stampin' Up! will have another stamp positioning tool? I love the Stamparatus. Disappointed to see it retire. Um, I do not believe there are any plans for um, a stamp positioning tool at this time. So um, that's that. I don't have any other information other than that. Due to some, for legal reasons, Stampin' Up! made the decision to retire the Stamparatus. And they have officially sold out of all of their stock. That happened on Sunday. And then I believe the grid paper... The foam mat and the magnets, those are all sold out as well. I know they're sold out. I just couldn't remember if it was Sunday or Monday that they sold out. So um, it's a bummer, but it is a fantastic tool. So um, let's see. For my magnet sheets, Jamie, I order those from Amazon. They are C line, the letter C is in Charlie, line, shop ticket holders. They are five by eight in size and I trim them down to seven and a quarter. You'll be able to find those also on my favorites page. Um, again, C line, shop ticket holders. Okay. The tornadoes missed me. Yes, Sharon, we did not receive the tornadoes which I am grateful for. <laughs> Gregors, how long before this live did you figure out the second fold for tonight's project? I believe it was during the six o'clock hour. <laughs> yeah, I was playing with it. I'm like, ooh, I like those on the outside. It was just funny. See, I get creative inspiration in some of the oddest times. Are the new catalogs out yet? I sure want. So Debbie, no, they are not. I just ordered... Um, my catalogs on what day of the week is it? I ordered them yesterday morning. Um, I did not expedite them due to their weight. So they should arrive to me in about a week. And then, um, those that have requested them for me, um, you, if you've placed an order of $25 or more with me in the last six months, so since October 1st, you got a special email from me to request your copy of the catalog. It's one of my VIP perks. 
Um, so that's the scoop there. So uh, catalogs will go out, I think, the week of... Depending on when they get to me, I think we'll turn them around for mid-April and, and customer my customers will receive them before the catalog goes live on May 2nd. It's a good one. The Stamparatus is not available for purchase any longer, Deborah. It's now been discontinued. It's completely sold out, unfortunately. I'm having a really bad creative block and I'm having a tough time getting out of it. Any tips? And how long did it take for you to be confident in giving your cards to others? Ooh, Pat, this is a great question. So as far as running into creative blocks, it happens to me all the time, believe it or not. It just does. Sometimes it's based on my mood. Sometimes it's based on what's going on in my life. Um, and sometimes it's just, you know, nothing looks good or nothing inspires me. I do love to go to places like Pinterest, um, as well as even videos on YouTube, just to kind of get some ideas going. Uh, and I'll create a Pinterest board of things that inspire me kind of along the way. And then I'll kind of take things um, that I liked about certain things and piece them together. I might come up, you know, it might inspire me because of the colors or it might inspire me because of the way they put a sentiment. Um, I do try to look specifically for Stampin' Up! projects because that helps to inspire me with the Stampin' Up! stamp sets we have. The other place I go to for inspiration is the catalog. So I find that each time I go through the catalog, I see something completely new that I didn't notice the first time through. And I feel like that happens like for a hundred times that I go through that catalog. So Pinterest, the catalog, uh, videos as well, even ca um, like clothing catalogs, I'll get inspiration from, whether that be patterns or colors, um, or even, even what's in the background of photos in magazines that might inspire me in a way. Um, as far as being confident in giving cards to others, this is a tough one um, because I can't, I certainly can't give you confidence other than anybody receiving something handmade in the mail is an incredible gift. I want you to think about how you feel when you receive a handmade card in your mailbox. I don't know if you're like me, but I, I get the informed delivery from USPS, so this is in the US, and I'll get kind of scanned images of what's coming in my mailbox for that day. And I know that when I see a scanned image that somebody has sent me a personal, I know it's a handmade card kind of based on who it's from, I cannot wait to get to the mailbox. So I want you to think about how you feel when you get those cards. I hope that will give you confidence in sending any card you make to someone because it will literally make their day. You never know when that handmade hug is gonna be just what that person needs. So I hope that gives you confidence, Pat. But yeah, definitely look for inspiration in different places. And I don't think you should hesitate another minute in sending your handmade cards out. So I hope that helps you. All right, Carla, I appreciated the evident hard work that went into the gem pockets. It was <laughs> Tetris on steroids. Yes, I was very proud of what the embellishments looked like, <laughs> but if you could have seen me actually putting them together, I was using tweezers and yeah, I, somehow I figured out how to fit all the embellishments on one four by six piece of um, DSP backing. I was very proud of the end result. However, I was pu pulling my hair out. Um, part of it is I live with a dog, right? So dogs and adhesive, do not go well together. Neither does acetate. Acetate um, attracts dog hair, and then the second it sticks to adhesive, it's over. So you don't even want to know how many, <laughs> how many pieces of dog hair I was pulling off the embellishments. But yeah, I was laughing at the same time that I was crying. No, I didn't really cry. But yeah, I was like, why did I do this? <laughs> Oh, where do I get the magnet cards? Michelle, I get those from Stampin' Storage. I purchased their five by seven, but they have a, a bunch of different sizes depending on the size of dies that you have and the storage that you have. I do store them in their creative crates as well. Uh, they also have creative crates in different sizes and um, love the Stampin' Storage ones. They actually on the back of the magnet cards have, it's kind of laminated, it's not. It's more of a like a glossy, I love the back of these. And actually you can stick um, stamp sets to the back of it. So you could store your stamps on the back side of the magnet cards, but they're great 
I don't know if you can see the thickness. They're amazing quality, and I won't buy my magnet cards from anywhere else. Stamp and storage. The pre-order began, well, technically, Stampin' Up! told us it was 3 a.m. Mountain Time, but products were loaded and ready by 12 a.m. Mountain Time, so that was 2 a.m. Eastern Time for me. So I set my alarm for 1.55. <laughs> Logged on. I think it ended up taking me about an hour to get my order in because we were all so excited to pre-order that there was quite a backlog. And um, I finally went to bed about three and I was wide awake at that point. So it was very hard to go to bed. Brian's alarm went off at 445 and I was like, what? I had just fallen asleep. Um, but yeah, it's worth it. I love staying up for, or waking up to get in a catalog order. Did you and or Brian ever go to an Ernst & Young conference in Atlanta? Our Georgia Adult Educators Conference followed them for years. An anime conference followed us. They had the most fun, I think. Um, I didn't go to any conferences in Atlanta. Most of the time we would travel elsewhere for our trainings and things. I don't remember attending one in Atlanta, but that's funny. Oh, thank you, Deb. She's confirming the standard stamp cases are in the new catalog. I thought I had seen them, but then I was questioning myself. So thanks for the confirmation. Yes, I did say that. All right, let's see. Um, Lonnie, I believe you're on my team. Um, the single copy of the catalog for demonstrators. Those were mailed out via bulk mail. Um... Shortly after the, the PDF of the catalog, which was for demonstrators' eyes only, that was on March 29th. I do know that um, demonstrators are starting to read their complimentary copy, starting to receive their complimentary copy of catalogs as we speak. So um, heading to a mailbox near you if you're a demonstrator. Deidre, great question. Um, plates for the Stamparatus. One of the greatest things about the Stamparatus was that the, the plates were removable. And oftentimes, like for example, if you're doing a stamp camp or you've got a really complicated card where you've got um, multiple uh, stamp, you're stamping multiple images on the, on the card itself. Um, in the Stamparatus, you can have two plates, which gives you four stamping surfaces, but you might have a need like in a stamp camp or a stamp class to where you have you want to set up the stamps for multiple cards then you could set up the stamps on multiple plates so you might use more than two plates for that and i believe that's why folks are asking for more plates i have a lot of plates which made it really easy to be making um, cards and multiples i could kind of set things up ahead of time and then there it's just ready to go and you just swap out the plates as needed one of my favorite things about the stamparatus how do Let's see. How do you remember all the sentiments you have when deciding what to use when creating? I have a few and seem to look at every item before I can decide. I do a little bit of that as well, Linda. I will stand in front of my stamp storage and kind of look at all the spines, but I also do have my stamps cataloged in an inventory program called Airtable. I've got um, a blog post all about that, and I can look through sentiments that way as well. It's a great thing. It takes a lot of work to get it set up, but once you do kind of take the time to set it up, it's a great resource for looking at your sentiments. All right, I have reached the end of the questions. Thank you guys so much. Hold on, let me, I'm gonna put them, there we go. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed tonight's video and got a great tip or two, I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe here. That helps us here on YouTube. I will be live again next week for episode 278, I believe, of the Paper Pixie next Wednesday. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed Easter for those of you who celebrate. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Take care. Bye.